now. You're Derek today. I'm what Derek. are you tomorrow? I'm Derek. <laughs> <You're> tomorrow. <laughs> Hello everybody, I am Joey. And I'm Derek. And welcome to episode four of The Spoken Wheel Show. Now, we've taken a little bit of a previous break because we've done a bunch of specials, but we're back with a full episode since we have time to film. So, the Jeep Wagoneer is back. Well, sort of. So there's a new Jeep Wagoneer concept. Now in this digital rendering, as he's ranted on about, you can see it's what the Wagoneer would look like if it had the wood sides. And uh, yeah, it's not ugly, but I kind of feel like the Wagoneer needs wood sides. I, I like the wood sides. Otherwise, it's not a Wagoneer. I like the wood sides. I mean, the BT Cruiser had no, wood sides. No, but think about it. Think about but it. If the Jeep Wagoneer has always had wood sides, you kind of got to care. I mean, think, think about the Mustang. Yeah. They always had the three, the tail lights, everything. You got to keep the car the same way. It'd be like if they made the Mustang into an electric SUV. Oh, wait, they did that. Oh, wait. So it looks to compete with the Lincoln Navigator and the Range Rover. So it's a luxury car. So this car is based on the Ram 1500 chassis. Based... Not that he's biased because he owns a Ram 1500. No, don't have a Ram 15. Well, I mean, we do, but not biased anyway towards Ram 1500s. Not as much as the Cadillacs. So looking at the interior, it is very clean and modern. I have to say they actually did a good job. Now, again, this is the concept, but it doesn't seem unrealistic. So this is the production car. That's not bad. Not my style, but I guess your people would like this. It actually seems to be very spacious and pretty luxurious as well. So as you've just seen in the video, it has this massively huge front grille and it lights up. It's a disco party. <laughs> and this disco party will cost you over $100,000. That's right, $100,000 and you can get yourself a Jeep Wagoneer. Concept. So Concept. you can't get it. So you can't get it. But It'll probably cost more. Yeah, well, maybe, but over $100,000, you can get yourself a concept car. A car? A car. Well, yes, it's a car, Joey. What do you think? It's not a car. It's a boat. We're selling boats now, people. Well, they do say these are land yachts, and this thing probably drives like a boat. So, possibly. Now, Aston Martin has released a new car. It's called the Aston Martin Victor. It is a one-off that looks to be built off the Vulcan. However, it's actually built off the 177 even though it looks much more like a Vulcan. So kind of weird there. The reason it's based off the 177 is because they had one remaining chassis of the 177 that they just didn't build. And they thought, well, let's just throw new bodywork on it. And that's what they've done. So it's inspired by the vantage of the 70s and 80s with those big front headlights. It is finished in British racing green with a British racing green interior. Green on green, very interesting choice. Then things get even more interesting. It has a cashmere headliner with a six speed manual gearbox. So this car originally on the chassis that was left behind came with an automatic and the Vulcan was an automatic, but they put in a manual. So pretty interesting. So is this the car the Vulcan should have really been all along? We don't know. The little car company strikes again. You might remember the Bugatti Baby 2, which was based on the Bugatti Type 35. Now this time, they built a DB5 Junior. Yeah, not too clever of a name, Junior. Like the Baby 2, it is not road legal, except this time, it's even more expensive, starting at $60,000. So let's recap. You just paid $60,000 on a car that's not road legal, half the size of the front of my car, and you're stuck with a little tiny car. I do have to admit, they're really cute cars, and if you want a showpiece in your living room, that's a good $60,000 showpiece. Not a good car to drive around, though. No. Good news! What? We've rebranded Hot Topics to Discussion Drive. Oh, yes. This segment and intro is totally not inspired by the Grand Tours. Conversation Street. Well, now it's time to take a slice of delicious discussions and debates from the bakery on the corner of Discussion Drive. <laughs> Brace yourself for the all-new Maserati MC20. The latest Maserati MC Hammer is not the successor to the Maserati MC12. The MC12 was a hypercar, well, this is a supercar. If the MC-12 was the Concorde, this is the Boeing 747. Both are nice, but the MC-20 isn't as prestigious. It will cost you over $200,000, and it will be available in both a coupe and a convertible along with a hybrid version. As we said in episode three, it has a rather complicated twin-turbo V6 with 
F1 technology. It does 0 to 60 in 3 seconds and has a top speed of 202 miles an hour. However, Maserati didn't exactly construct this car. If its engine has F1 tech, then it must be a Ferrari engine because at the moment Ferrari makes Formula 1 engines, not Maserati. The chassis is made by Dallara, who is building their own supercar called the Stradale, which means road going in Italian, but they also make chassis for a bunch of race cars. All right, so here's some of the road cars Dallara has done. The Alfa Romeo 4C, the KTM Crossbow, the Alfa Romeo 8C, the Bugatti Veyron, and the Bugatti Chiron. All right, now ready for race cars. They make Indy cars, the Haas F1 car, F2 cars, F3 cars, LMP2, Euro Formula, Indy Lights, Super Formula, DPI, Renault RS01, and the Audi DTM cars. And I'm sure there's probably some we left out somewhere. The point is, there's a ton, so the MC20 has now just been added to this list. Although the bodywork is done by Maserati, it still looks like a Ferrari. Now one thing we pointed to when we talked about this car, I believe it was in episode 2, was that since Maserati and Ferrari is part of FCA, there's a lot of brand sharing going on. And so we expected a lot of parts to be shared. However, we didn't expect this many things to be shared. Just looking at the basic bodywork alone, you can see it looks very similar to the Ferrari, yet it's different designers. However, all of this is nothing new. The Maserati MC12 was an exact copy of the Ferrari Enzo. It was built so FCA could use the chassis in the FIA GT1 championship without having to make the Ferrari Enzo look ugly in order to be functional and aerodynamic. As Enzo Ferrari famously said, aerodynamics are for people who can't build engines. So of course in Ferrari's tribute car, that needed to be true. It needed to look good, not necessarily be aerodynamic. The MC12 was faster than the Ferrari Enzo because it was designed to be fast. However, at the same time, it was ugly. Rather than the MC standing for Maserati course, which means Maserati racing, the MC on this car stands for Maserati copy. The okay. Lucid Air has finally been released. Now, I remember talking to Derek about this car in sixth grade. The base model of this car will start at $80,000, which probably means you're paying a lot for a car and you'll probably get a full tank of gas with it. If that. Maybe quarter tank. Half quarter tank. tank. Half tank, the gauge nice in the middle. Or a uh, positive gauge. Positive gauge. Okay. Wait, how can you gas in an electric car? The top of the line car will start at $170,000. A bargain compared to the quarter million dollar Porsche Taycan Turbo S. It looks interesting. It's not ugly, but it just doesn't seem to be exciting at all, especially being finished in taupe. I have to admit though that the car does have a new look. Interesting floating sun visors. I don't know how they work. Yeah, how, do, how does that work? Interesting. Interesting. That yeah. sums up this car. That see, it's it's elegant in a sense as new technology progresses and the automobile world is changing. But at the same time, uh, a lot of these new concepts are not as desirable as old ones. The Mercedes S Class has finally been released. We talked about the leaked images in our episode two, and the car is basically the exact same thing. Well, I mean, it is. Well, because we leaked images of the car that they said is actually the car of the S-Class, which is now the actual S-Class now being produced of the leaked images that we said we had of the actual S-Class. Yes. So hopefully it's the same car because if we got leaked images of another car, that means that they're producing a different car because of the leaked images that we got off the internet. Yes. Right. As we also mentioned earlier, Mercedes has assumed that all of their previous S-Class buyers have, have died, died, as this interior is a tech frenzy. The last thing a 90-year-old person wants to do is accidentally order movie tickets when they just meant to raise the temperature to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Not one of the problems you want to have when you're 80 years old. No. No. Moving on to the bidding paddle. Today we've got a 1957 Mercedes-Benz 300 SL. As we speak, it is for sale on Bring a Trailer for over $900,000. It is finished in this really interesting blue-gray color called, I'm going to botch this German pronunciation, Blue Grau, 
which just translates to blue-gray. If this was a Ferrari, here's what the color would be called. La tonalità molto distintiva che è stata spruzzata su questa elegante vettura cade tra il blu e il grigio. Tuttavia non è blu o grigio. So that Italian you just heard right there, that we totally did not have Google Translate read for us in voiceover and we just pretended we were speaking. Well, that translates to... The very distinctive hue which has been sprayed upon this elegant car falls in between blue and gray. However, it is not blue or gray. Very Italian. For Mercedes, they just call it blue-gray. You see the Italians versus the German. Next up, we've got a 1954 Jaguar XK120 SE Roadster. Now, I chose this car because I love the XK120, but also because it's finished in Derek's favorite color, mint green. Okay, okay. The actual color is called pastel green, and it's finished over a suede green leather interior. Which really doesn't make any sense, because suede and leather are two separate things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they might be put next to each other. Yes, that would be a nice, very nice combination, but suede leather makes no sense. It's a bit confused. I'd like to be saying a Ford Cadillac. Which would be Ford. Very... <laughs> but didn't Ford start Cadillac? Well, Ford started Cadillac, but GM bought it out. You get the point. As we're filming, this car is currently for sale on Bring a Trailer for $70,000. Gordon Murray has released a new car called the T50S. Now, you might have seen our video on the Gordon Murray T50. If you haven't, go check that out. But the T50S is essentially just a racing version. So it's the same car, but... It racing version of that car which is sort of a racing version but of the car the road. yeah this but is the only picture drawing picture we have of it yes is it real that's a drawing no but is it real like, well they're gonna it, build it well they're gonna build it so why are we talking about a car that they're gonna build and yet we only have a picture well, because of it. we've seen the original t50 right and now he's coming out with this thing. Yeah, but see, the original. problem is, is that that's just a digital rendering. And well, the problem with digital rendering well. is because you don't know exactly what it's going to look like. It has a horrible fake background. You probably got some fake person sitting behind the steering wheel smiling like that, you know. And then you don't know how big it's going to be. And then you don't know the exact size. And probably because they just based it off the other car that they just built, which was the regular Gordon Murray T50. Now they have a T50S, which is the same car, but it looks like it has a massive fin that follows behind the rear window. It does have a big shark fin. Yeah, moving on. If it will be raced, we don't know for sure. So that will be something time will tell. Maserati is releasing a new car called the Grucale. It's not really a uh, elegant name. Grucale. Grucal. I don't know. Grucol? We don't know. Because Maserati's font, the O's and A's look the same. It sits below the Levante in price. But it's built in the same factory as the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. As we mentioned earlier about Maserati, there's a lot of brand sharing. So it's probably just a rebadged Stelvio. But we don't know. It might be the next greatest car, and it might not be. Probably won't be. We definitely won't be. Well, they put fins on it. And they put a lot of chrome, and then they put a lot of Cadillac emblems on it, and then maybe if they put white wall tires, and then maybe if they put a massive front Not grill. that he's biased, but we have a 1959 Cadillac behind us. The new Nissan CEO is already off to a good start by not ending up in jail like Carlos Ghosn did. One of the things they've done is put a new Nissan logo on it. The CEO's first car, is the Z. The old one before that was in production for 18 years. So as someone who knows a lot about the automotive market- Not and, that I don't know anything. But as someone who does know a lot about the automotive market, unlike you, that's a long time for a car to be in production for. Yes, so you could buy a car, keep it for 10 years, and it would be the same, then 18 let's say- years let's later. Say, let's say you bought the same car, you would keep it for another eight no, no, years, no, 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 and then it'd still be the same. It's like the Prius. It's the same as me. Well, it's just getting worse. Oh, that's true. So I guess you should have bought it earlier. Invest in classic <laughs> Priuses. <laughs> <laughs> now, it has a six-speed manual transmission. Very rare these days, as people don't really like cars that have anti-millennial theft device installed. But Nissans and Hondas and typical 
cheaper Japanese cars do have a high theft rate, so having anti-millennial theft device will definitely help the car insurance rates. It will have a three liter twin turbocharged V6 producing either 300 or 400 horsepower. We're not sure at the moment. I'm gonna assume it's 400, but as I said, we don't know. So it can't be in between just 300 or 400. Or, yeah. Well, what if it is between? Then, then I'd be, I'd be. It has 399. 399. We got the toast burning in the oven and we're welcoming you to Roast My Ride. And today we've got the Pandem Chevrolet C8 Corvette. From the beginning, this car was a pandemic. Often when people refer to a car as riced out, it's some overbuilt JDM ugly car like the one we projected on your screen here, driven by a reckless teenager. However, this is a Corvette. The color on this is just bland. It is lowered way too much. The wheels and tires definitely don't belong in this car. I mean, it's oversized. The wide body looks very tacky and strange. It's just like someone threw bits on the car. Oh God. And the two-tone black plastic accents are just <laughs> bizarre. Let's just put it that way. Looking at the front here, it just looks like a cat ready to puke. Ah. Not to mention, it's huge rear wing. So it only will cost you $7,000 to turn your Corvette from the beautiful thing it came out of the factory as it was to this. And if this was the exterior, what would the interior look like? All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed watching episode four of the Spoken Wheel Show. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek. And thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. No, that was... It's good enough. Bye.